Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, this is the only video uh, on my channel this week um, because uh, I'm not really feeling like vlogging this week so I decided to prepare something longer for you. I hope it will be longer and I hope it will be interesting because as the title says I'm, I come to you with my currently stationary and art supplies essentials. Um, what I do, uh, what I use at the moment. Um, if I don't use a thing I used to use, it doesn't mean I don't like it anymore. Uh, it means I'm not really into it right now, but I still think it's a great product, but I will mention these things um, as I go. So I prepared a, a huge, <laughs> the whole part of my desk here uh, 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 on the side is like busy with things. So there's a mess to show you. Uh, first I will start with journaling supplies, uh, as I suppose maybe more of you will be interested in these. Uh, what I use to journaling these days, so um, I'm not really into doing anything <laughs> lately, so I journal only in one uh, slash two notebooks right now. Uh, my traveler's notebook is uh, on my shelf and I write in it like a journal entries, like just some thoughts, uh, loose thoughts and uh, feelings. So I don't use it as an art journal right now. And I am using two, I have them here. I am using two notebooks right now and these are these two. This is Leuchtturm uh, 1917 uh, bullet journal, a second edition. And this is important to mention it's a second edition because the beautiful blush pink is here. But the paper, the paper is much thicker and much more durable and it really takes everything. And uh, if you're here on this channel for quite some time, you know that I'm not, I love Leuchtturms because they have like style, they smell wonderful, they are beautiful, the colors are amazing. Um, but the paper, guys, the paper is the key for me because I use a lot of various media and especially markers and stickers and stamps. And for me, the most important thing is that it takes stamp really well. Uh, but this one, this takes everything well because it has a... Um, it has a much, much um, thicker paper. You have a quick review of this uh, of this notebook here on my channel. Just you need to just scroll down a little bit. You will find a quick review and pen test. You will see how well it takes everything. And this is the one I'm doing main art journaling with currently. It varies from moment to moment because you know I'm really unstable uh, in case of notebooks I'm using. So this is the one I'm using currently and it's slowly getting uh, thicker in here because I mainly do this. I mainly do this. <laughs> so I put a lot of additional paper in here. Um, but it's great. I really love using this. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. And I highly recommend it to everyone who uses ink, stamps, stickers, markers, paints. It's great. And recently uh, Leuchtturm started um, some collaborations with other brands and they experiment with their papers. So I highly, highly recommend checking it checking it out because I think they finally realized that they, their paper is not uh, up to standards of many journal, journal la, 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 people doing journals recently and they are really um, they are really developing some new um, patents and techniques uh, in case of paper so go have a look it's very very interesting how they develop and uh, change uh, during time so this is the main journal I uh, work with and this tiny little baby is a bullet planner from Tiger and it was a review on this channel also a um, few weeks maybe some months ago and I don't show it publicly because it's it's only text and text and black and white text. Sometimes, sometimes I will put a black and white sticker, but it's black and white. It's just texts and tasks and uh, dots and tasks. 
um, but I really highly recommend that this paper for a beginner I have a yeah I have a uh, I have a pen test in here it looks like this uh, of course the stamp is a little bit more visible but it usually takes everything really well and I use it as my bullet journal as a task list I like to have it uh, all in one place I also uh, use a companion um, app for bullet journal I will show you how it looks like I didn't upload up uh, dated recently mm, bullet journal it looks like this you have your uh, don't remind me what happened library yeah this is my this is my journal I have my uh, I have my pages in here uh, you just put what kind of notebook you have if you have an, the official bullet journal notebook it's good you can just number your pages put um, like for example like here you just scan it and you can have it always with you if you don't really like to carry your bullet journal this is a great companion app I used to have it for quite some time and I had no idea how to use it properly but recently I found out also it evolved in recent years so yeah I use this but notebooks are not the most important things today tonight because it's almost 2 a.m. Uh, I will show you my best and the most favorite gadgets I use and pen tools. Uh, I use to journal and I can't imagine life without it. So first <laughs> there's a classic there's a Tessa roller tape a double uh, sided adhesive uh, it's reusable you just switch this tiny part and you can go on with it with it it has uh, it doesn't say but this is the bigger one uh, you can buy them in two sizes the smaller one it's not reusable unfortunately but this is the bigger one and this is reusable you just uh, as I as I showed you you just uh, swap these and this is beautiful this is wonderful this is everything I would ever need and when I see I have no refill at home I panic and that may be stupid, but I panic. I don't have a glue stick in here. I don't have a glue stick. I hate glue sticks. Um, I really respect people who embrace glue stick aesthetic, um, but I really hate glue everywhere. So I just do this. And another tiny essential is my uh, date stamp. This tiny cutie uh, I bought it this is by knowledge but it doesn't say anything to anyone because I found it uh, for three dollars on Aliexpress and it it's not too big it's not too small and uh, it keeps me up to date with everything so this is just a small gadget and the next one you know well and you know I can't praise it uh, enough uh, this is a peri page thermal printer there's so many brands of thermal printers right now so many uh, you have so much choice um, more expensive less expensive more popular less, less popular but mainly they work the same you print on thermal paper like a receipt and um, you can stick it anywhere uh, you can get uh, various types of inserts of uh, paper rolls in here usually uh, as a default you get a really a really simple one like as a receipt at store uh, but now I have a transparent sticker so I just need to cut it I can't uh, just throw it tear it tear it I can't tear it I just need to uh, use my scissors but it's uh, transparent it's a uh, sticker I use it for everything it's very very useful I love it so much and the app is very intuitive so it's it's uh, easy for everyone to do whatever they need to do with the printer uh, all right so I will have a sip of something to drink and now here we go with some writing tools 
I will start with the main writing tool uh, for my journal entries and bullet journal. This is my favorite fountain pen at the moment and this is MD Paper um, 1. Probably this is a limited edition. Uh, it has a very unique nib. It's bended a little bit. You won't see it, but it's it's bended like in a little arch. It's very, very smooth. It, it's the smoothest pen I've ever had. And of course, I still have my Caveco collection and I love it very, very much. I have them right here. They are inked with various colors. This is pink, this is green, and this is olive. This is pink and this is uh, some kind of blue but I don't use them that much right now and the MD paper one is my absolute favorite at the moment. So if we have a fountain pen we need a pencil. So my pencil of choice, I tried various pencils and you know I'm <laughs> by no means a professional but uh, I tried mechanical pencils, regular pencils and I'm always like I'm always confused because I have no idea which one I like more. Uh, but uh, when I got my first Blackwing uh, pencil, this is Blackwing 840. Um, yeah, Blackwing 840 with gold detailing. It looks like this. Uh, it has a, a rubber eraser in here and here it's munched and it's bitten by Denny because she just enjoys this pencil. I I don't have words because you know black wings are pretty high quality pencils so every time I see her just randomly chewing on it my patience is done. Uh, so this is not a mechanical pencil. I've had a few ones and this one um, It erases really well. Uh, it's uh, pretty pretty soft uh, I really like uh, how it feels when you draw or write with it um, I'm as I mentioned, I'm not a professional. I just like this pencil so much. So this is the one I'm using actually uh, I have a second one. It's not yet um, sharpened but I don't have it here, uh, so I won't show you. Uh, all right, so now we have fine liners. And at this moment, I came back to Micron, Sakura Micron Pigma, um, Sakura Pigma Micron pens. I have actually four of them, these. I have uh, one, three, five, and 10. And I need to tell you guys that 10 is so underrated. It's very thick, but if you need, a, if you want to do some calligraphy with a um, straight line with no upstrokes or downstrokes um, uh, with different uh, thickness, it's so underrated. It's so good. And I was using um, uni balls, uh, uni pins, fine liners for a few years but recently i was uh, <laughs> i was very unpleasantly surprised when the uh, two of these exploded in my backpack when i was traveling home um so i was very angry and the first thing i've done after i came home was going to paper concept and buying microns because they were always great they were they were always great so i have these and I use them almost for everything, for line work, for writing, for some tiny detailing. There's really a lot of choice what to do with it. If, you, if we have a black um, pens, I need a white one. Because a white one, a white gel, uh, gel pen is really useful not only if you have a black paper or a color paper. Um, before I start, this is Uniball Signa Broad and this is, uh, what thickness it is? It's broad as it says. Mm, it doesn't say the exact, probably it says it somewhere, but I can't see it. 
but never mind it's broad and it's very opaque and it's very useful not only when you uh, when you write on a color paper but also when you make mistakes on white paper it's very subtle in erasing our <laughs> mistakes uh, not life mistakes unfortunately but uh, our spelling mistakes or our if the uh, for example if the atramant is leaking somewhere and uh, ink or we just I don't know our hand shakes and we write something and not evenly it masks it really nicely and I like this one very very much and I used to have jelly rolls they are also great but this one is a master of being opaque. Now um, I have some markers mainly and some stamping tools. Uh, so I will start with markers. Um, I still love zebra white liners and Tombow uh, markers, brush pens. I love them. I also love Ecoline um, pen watercolor. I love them. They are great. I highly recommend. But recently my color palette is really sad in case of journaling so i only use two and this is tombow number 990 this tiny beige color and my liner is in gray simple gray my liner and i use only these two and these two are in my pencil case always when i leave um and these are trendy now <laughs> in my in my world now the absolute hit of recent weeks thing that everyone wants thing that everyone loves and think that it's totally unnecessary but it's so cool you need to have it these are <laughs> clean color dot uh, zig uh, rdc Zig, 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 Kuretake, yeah, are these Kuretake Zig clean color dot? These are pens made for making dots. You may laugh now, I leave you the space for laughter, but these are great. These are so cool. I will show you how it looks like uh, because I use them with every spread recently. Oops, don't, don't run away. For example, it looks like this, like you can just, you see, you can just fill the space with dots. Oh my god, I'm going to sneeze. I yawn, I didn't sneeze, I don't know what happened. Uh, so you can buy them as a set, but I didn't like any of the sets particularly, so I prepare, preferred to choose um, single ones. So I have grey, of course, is there, and this is platinum. This one is uh, hyacinth, the flower. This one is fawn, this one is my favorite. And this one is summer sun. This yellow is also beautiful. Uh, so I have these four and I didn't, uh, I haven't seen another color I liked so much as these. Uh, so I have four of these and I'm super totally happy with them. Okay, so the last writing tool, we have my Apple Pencil. My iPad <laughs> for today's standards is pretty old. It's 2018, it's 2018 or 2019. It's not that old. I probably, I think it's 2018. I, I just don't cut my arm for it. But this is Apple Pencil first generation. And I use, I probably, <laughs> uh, I probably should, um, switch the tip already because I use it from the beginning and I I I probably will just notice the difference when I change it but I didn't do it yet but the main um, item I wanted to show you of course is my uh, grip this is a Caveco grip for Apple Pencil it's suitable for both generations but generation 2 you cannot charge your um, charge your um, pencil magnetically uh, with the case it's destroyed it's <laughs> oh my god it's just it's 
it looks terrible in in a real light like up close it looks terrible uh, but it helped me with studying with drawing with painting with writing it helped me with everything and this gives uh, so much weight and so much good grip to the pencil I've had some silicone ones before and they were just sliding off the pencil and I was furious um, as it's Caveco, it was pretty pricey, but uh, I'm happy to say that the price doesn't rise because I recently um, sold them um, in an offer of the Escribo shop. I uh, bought it originally and they were just like randomly appeared on my um, start page and they are still costing the same. Uh, I would usually uh, suppose uh, the prices will rise, but no, uh, there are various colors of it. I uh, chose pink, uh, but you can pick whatever color you want, really. And this is super, super good for your grip and for your hand when you're using your Apple Pencil, because if you have ever used Apple Pencil with nothing, it's so uncomfortable. As much as I love iPad and Apple Pencil technology, it's so uncomfortable. Just God. Um, all right, so here I have a last part of markers. And these are my acrylographs from Archer and Olive. And these are great. Uh, these are these the kind of markers that needs to lay uh, flat. Uh, all the time because there's paint in them and I picked up the uh, thinnest uh, tip uh, seven millimeter and it's perfect for writing it's it looks beautiful it's smooth the colors are great but if you want to paint with them it's very tedious uh, sometimes I mix them with Posca markers but this is acrylic and Posca markers are just one of a kind to be honest are these are what they are water based but with a pretty unique ingredients so these are not the same um, but I usually on paper I mix them sometimes because of course I have I have two sets of uh, acrylographs and I have only a few shades of um, Posca pens so sometimes I um, just mix them but these are great but if you prefer to paint with them like to use them as Posca pencils pencils Posca markers uh, just get a thicker one I think it will be easier because the tip is very very hard and it's pretty um, pretty ha hard to paint with it efficiently okay so from the journaling section there's my last uh, my last tiny drawer and this is an ink drawer and at this moment I'm using these three inks the most uh, these are just um, distress inks and aged mahogany this one bundled sage this one and weathered wood this one weathered wood is actually blue <laughs> i i'm no native english so i have no idea what's the why is call it called like this they look like this beautiful beautiful colors i love them so much my favorite brand ever so this is everything if we are talking about uh journaling um, of course, there's much, much more, but I'm showing you only the essentials I really use on everyday basis, so it's easier for you. And now, oh my god, no, I forgot about washi tapes. <laughs> so I don't have uh, any particular favorite right now, but I have this box. And these are the ones I'm using, actually. Uh, these big ones are very fun fun to use super cool uh, this black MT I bought it for packaging but I use it sometimes in my spread and the ones I'm using the most are the grid ones here I have the grid ones with um, different colors I love them the most the rest is pretty new I use them uh, also but these absolute favorites so this is uh, everything about washi tapes it was not that big. So now we will go to art supplies. Um, as you may know, 
I'm not particularly talented in any uh, medium, so I do everything. <laughs> I try everything and I want to have fun with everything and this is mainly what I do. Uh, so I will show you my paints, my brushes, my markers and my sketchbook. You haven't seen the sketchbook yet, maybe on Instagram. Uh, most people um, is very um, uh, very timid about using a pricey sketchbook but I tried various sketchbooks um, mainly from uh, Talens this is a Holland brand as I as I remember well yes um, but this one I decided to get it because I was never satisfied with the paper whichever brand I chose and <sighs> This is awful of me, but this is a moleskin watercolor sketchbook. And it looks very professional because it's all dirty. It has like its edges, uh, edges dirty. There's paint everywhere. It looks, <laughs> it looks really professional. But uh, what I like the most, do I have a pen test in here? No, I have a paint test in here. I have a acrylograph and a Posca test in here. Never mind. Uh, I decided to purchase um, moleskin uh, for two reasons. I've heard the watercolor paper of moleskin is very good and very durable and that's true. That's actually true and um, even if I am still not a fan of uh, regular moleskin notebooks, I mean they are also beautiful and they are wonderful, but the paper though. Um, but Moleskin has something um, a lot of brands doesn't have and it's the very special size because this is A5 but slimmer. Look at this. Oh, look at the difference. The difference. The difference here, like it's much slimmer. And I love it. I would love my bullet journal to be this size, but I would like the paper to be this. <laughs> it's difficult, it's difficult, but I decided to get a proper sketchbook. And in contrary to notebooks, when I'm very shy and timid about using a fancy notebook for my doodles and the journals, um, the fancier sketchbook made me more brave to use it and I'm having so much fun every time I open it. Um, a few days ago, like yesterday, uh, I finished this. This is nothing, like this is nothing. As I mentioned, I'm not talented in any particular medium uh, or any plastic medium. I'm mainly a photographer and I should stick with that, but I really enjoy what I'm doing. So this is the most important. Um, one day, a few months ago, I glued this piece of um, book in here and I had no idea what to do with it. I just put it in here for future reference. And uh, a few days ago, I decided, heck yeah, I'm going to finish it. And I just um, put it, uh, put a sky with clouds as a background and I really like it. Here I just practice with my, uh, with my Posca. These are just getting the use to medium. These are so childish and awful. I don't want to speak about them. But uh, if you will be interested more in the sketchbook, of course, I will be very happy to show you. Just let me know. Um, but we are not here to talk about the sketchbook itself, but it's great. Go and buy it. It's great. It's a watercolor edition. It's great. It's not a sketchbook sketchbook because there is a sketchbook edition, but the paper is thin, but this is the watercolor. I was looking for it for quite some time because it was out of stock almost everywhere, but now I got it and I love it. Um, all right, let's go. I will start with um, brushes, maybe. No, I will start with palettes with palette itself because I think it's very creative. This is my palette. This is my favorite palette. I have three, three of them, um, like the empty palettes, just mixing palettes. And I got this one in paper concept. It was the cheapest palette ever, but the color though, and, and contrary to other um, surfaces, it doesn't um, bother me that the 
palette has a color because normally you um, mix your colors and it just makes you not see the exact color you're mixing. But I'm using this for acrylic gouache and it looks perfectly because it's very opaque so I really use it and it will be very hard to get rid of it but I think it's the charm of it I'm not going to get rid of it very soon because it looks professional um, never mind now I will start with my brushes I use two types of brushes um, I have a tip for you if you don't have to if you don't have to don't use the same brushes for watercolor and acrylic gouache because regular gouache is gouache, it's water-based, it will go off. <sighs> but acrylic gouache, it's not fun. <laughs> so I have two uh, I have two brushes for water watercolor I use now. I have a whole jar of brushes. I have a whole jar of brushes different brushes, spatulas, some mixing uh, tools, some acrylic brushes. I have a lot of things. These, these are great. These are by Art Creation and this is probably, no, this is by Talents as well. Is it called Talents? Yeah, these are by Talents as well. But look how big they are. Who would travel with them? Like, they are great quality, but who would travel with them? I have no idea, so I don't uh, use them that often, but they are very good quality. But for watercolor, I use my two water brushes, both by Pentel, and I have a size medium and a size small, and my butter is dying, so I will be right back. So I'm back with my um, brushes. So I've tried various uh, types of water brushes, um, even by Kuretake, and this is a great brand, as we all know, but only Pentel, <laughs> in my heart. I think these are the only ones that don't spill water everywhere you go, and you have more control over it. I don't know, maybe I was not lucky and I just found some um, faulty ones, but only Pentel for me, please. So I have the smaller one, it's a little bit green because it was used for the first time on green. And this one, this is my first water brush, it's old and <laughs> colored in different uh, paints, but a uh, huge tip for you. Don't use it with acrylic gouache because you will destroy it. Don't use it. Um, and I have two brushes for acry acrylic gouache and they are by Renaissance. Uh, and a lot of things in here, cat hair, cat hair alert. A lot of things here is by Renaissance. And this is a Polish brand. If I assume well, I think this is a Polish brand and they are pretty affordable and very good quality. So I have um, almost all my watercolor paints are Renaissance, except one in my current palette because I have four palettes in total of different brands. Uh, but the current one I'm working with uh, is all uh, Renaissance. Uh, so I have two of these, the square shaped and the oval shaped. They are great and they clean pretty nicely in warm water. Uh, so they are very cool. I like them very much. Mm. Next, so if I showed you my brushes, maybe I will show you my paints. So I will show you my newly curated watercolor palette and don't be fooled by Winsor & Newton here. It used to be a Winsor & Newton um, Artist Cotman palette, the most popular one. <sighs> But I took everything out. Like with time, it was my first professional watercolor palette and I took everything out except white <laughs> because white's always good. And I curated my own little palette. I have two um, free spaces here. I don't have contenders to put in there. Uh, these ones are cool. Probably with time, I will notice which one, which color I lack. Um, to be fully this 
to be fully um, aware of the colors I have and I will show you these these are beautiful all these colors except this beautiful beautiful lilac blue are by Renaissance yeah these empty too especially uh, all are by Renaissance except this blue this violet one this is one by talents and this all of these are very vibrant very beautiful very very great colors i have swatches in the sketchbook because i decided to do swatches of the palettes i'm working with currently and these are swatches these are just some random swatches at 4 a.m. and these are not perfect, but look how beautiful and vibrant these colors are. I'm really, really in love. Um, yeah, so this is the palette I'm currently working on. I have done one painting with it um, for now because it's fresh, um, but I'm uh, full of ideas for another one. I wanted to do one today, but I decided, hey, why won't I just film an overly long video instead? So I did that. <laughs> um, I keep here this original Windsor and Newton uh, tiny brush. This brush, it's, it has its age, but it's very good. Very good if you don't have anything and you want just to watercolor on the go. And here you just mix your uh, here you just mixed your paints. It's very good. I really like the size of the palette and the shape of the palette um, Because I have one by Renaissance themselves. I bought it as an empty palette, but Jesus guys look how disgusting this is. I have the rest of the colors. I took out of uh, I took out of the this palette um, so this is just my spare ones this is this these are the correct swatches of most of the colors of the of the the main palette this is ugly and it opens all the time and it has a hole in here i know that you should be able to put water in here and just go like this or like this i'm not really i uh, like this probably but i don't buy it i don't like it and I don't like it so I just took everything out of Windsor and Newton and put everything in here yeah so this is the palette I'm using and I will be using now um, so now I will show you my gouaches <laughs> this will be fun because um, you all know these you all know these Holbein gouaches acrylic gouaches and acrylic and gouache it's a cool mixture because it's very durable and very matte in the same time. It looks so nice. It gives a great texture. Um, but it's a little bit different to work with. These are all of my gouaches um, of various brands. Not only um, Holbein. I, have, I will show you which Holbeins I have because mainly because uh holbein is not available in poland like widely it, it's um don't you ever buy these don't you ever don't you uh, it's by i will tell you by i have no idea it's some german it's some german gold gouache don't you ever buy it it's rubbish um never mind i have only these yeah i have only these by holbein and these are acry acrylic gouaches and these are available in poland only in one online store you can't even look at them in person uh, so i what i do usually is i just go on youtube and um, put the uh, paint name and color and i see at people's swatches uh, i have a very good um desktop so i can view colors properly uh, i'm lucky to have one so this is how i pick my colors and this one this one i have i have something more ash where's more ash 
crushed something. Wow. I don't. Okay, never mind. This is a series called Ash and the color name. This is Ash Green and this is Ash Rose. And we were <laughs> we were laughing with Woodland Soul with Martina um, recently on Instagram that these shades are a golden grail, holy grail, not golden grail, holy grail of shades because these are beautiful and these are always out of stock <laughs> so i was lucky to have these two i want the blue one i want the blue one so much oh my god i can't even describe how i want the ash blue one but next time when i will be back into gouache because now i'm with posca markers on my heart mm. i have these acrylic gouaches and they are great i will they are pretty pricey they are really pricey because for example, this is a regular gouache by Renaissance, the same brand. It's uh, 20 mils and this is also 20 mils. This one costs about $5, more than $5. Yeah, it will be six or $7 a tube. And this one will be $1.50. So, and the colors are great, but this is not acrylic. This is a regular a water-based gouache. So this is the difference. But the quality of Holbein's, I've always, wa always wanted them. And when they arrived in Poland, I was like... Yeah, so now I have these and I have uh, these. Most of them are Renaissance because Renaissance... Uh, I am not very good at mixing colors and I know I should be, but I'm not. Uh, so I prefer to buy colors. Sometimes I mix some um, tiny amount for my own uh, need, but um, Renaissance gouaches have beautiful shades like... Do I have... Who's a huge fan of yellow ochre, huh? 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 <laughs> is this acrylic? Oh, this is acrylic! Why is it all mixed in here? Never mind then. I was one I was about to laugh that I love yellow ochre too much, but this is acrylic, so this is gouache. Is this gouache? This is gouache. This is gouache, gouache, gouache. This is by Talens, uh, and these are also super cheap. I got it like for uh, also maybe dollar and a half. Uh, I got two colors, this beautiful light lilac and this um, olive green. Beautiful colors. I uh, didn't have a chance to use them yet, but will soon. Um, but hey, yeah, uh, these are by Talents, but the rest of them is by Renaissance. And these are, I have some generic um, gouaches from one of the um, department stores um, because I wanted to try if gouache will be my thing but I bought a set of the like the cheapest the most random gouaches ever I have them because sometimes I use them to mix colors from them but usually I buy only Renaissance talents and uh, Holbein's I love them um, yeah, I was talking also with a friend about the price of Holbein gouaches, and yes, these are super pricey, but the pleasure. Guys, the pleasure. Of course that the gear does not make an artist. Of course not. But I'm sure I will never be an artist. So I will just play fun with nice things. I don't know. I, I, I'm doing my best, okay? But again, don't you ever buy this. Don't you ever buy this. Um, all right, so the only thing left are my Posca markers. Excited. So I will take 
uh, all of them out and show you the swatches later. Uh, every time I touch them, I'm so, I'm so in love. So, in general, I started my whole Posca marker adventure with these three. Uh, the gray with the size um, 3M, with the beige with size um, 3M, and with sunshine yellow with size 1MR. I have no idea what does it mean. What it means? I have no idea. Um, and I hated them at first. I just hated them. I put the piece of washi tape in here because I have two of these and I want to know which one is already activated. Um, I have two of these because uh, another one was in a set I got and I didn't notice and I couldn't just exclude one from a set because you don't do this. Um, so yeah, I hated them at first because they were wet, they scrunched, scratched the paper and I was very annoyed. But then um, I started playing with gouache I started playing with uh, YouTube research actually and I started learning more about them and um, as I go went through further and further I finally realized I just can't use them <laughs> so I started learning and now it's great now it's great uh, but now I know why paper reacts like it reacts because they are mainly not made for paper <laughs> This is the first video that appeared when I searched for how to properly use Posca markers and it was like they are not really for paper But never mind mm, You can write with them on everything on uh, ceramics on glass on plastic, on metal. People do graffiti with this. Um, this is the biggest one I have because this is just a background filler in the color Avery, but they are much bigger. This one is huge. This one is huge, but they are much, much bigger and people do graffiti with it. People do custom clothes and shoes with them. People do everything with them and you can um, make them more permanent, for example, on ceramics by baking it. Mm. It's a very interesting concept of these markers, to be honest. But I really love how they look like. And uh, at first, as I showed you, I had only these three. Then I was looking through the colors and I had really no idea which uh, direction I wanted to go for. And I decided to buy a set, a pastel set, and it was a great choice because it give, gave me a base. It gave me a base, I was able to shape the color palette I want uh, around. Uh, so I picked up, these were, this is a yellow, yes. This is light yellow, light blue, yes. This is lilac, yes. That was the set I got. That was the set I got. And it gave me a really nice base to create my shading, my uh, color differences, my textures, everything. So I went through all the palettes they had available and I picked up some additional colors to be complementary to these, uh, to use them together. I didn't activate the white one because it would be a shame if it just dried out and uh, I, use a, um, I use an acrylograph for now. But I actually, I should have a white one still because I bought white one once just to use on black paper and I hated it and <laughs> I didn't use it. Uh, but I have one activated one somewhere. But yeah, this was a set and it gave me a base. So I was doing some more research, more color swatching, and I picked up some complementary colors, which I will show you right now. 
um, the colors I have here, this is the first yellow I had. This is a sunshine yellow with a very, very tiny tip. It's very, it's a beautiful color, but it's very hard to fill a huge block of uh, paper with it. It's very hard, but it's a beautiful shade. And this one is a regular yellow, so it's more vibrant, more just vibrant um, this one is more pastel and I love that so much so I decided to get a bigger one in sunshine yellow see the difference uh, this is a 5m this is um, this is a huge one um, so I got this one to fill out the backgrounds uh, so now I have some for detailing and I have some for backgrounds and this is my first uh, I will do this and I will do this. So this is my first three of yellow collections. I'm obsessed with yellow. I love yellow. Uh, wait a minute. I need a sip. I love yellow. But this was too pastel and it was too vivid. I was missing something sun, something sunflowery, something warm. So here came straw yellow. Straw yellow is beautiful. It's beautiful. It's so warm. It's so, ah, it's beautiful. So this is my collection of four yellows. On the screen, they may look the same and it's such a shame, but this is a collection of four yellows and I use them the most often. Uh, then I have beige. Beige is cool, but sometimes too dark. I'm a really a huge fan of uh, cream paper, but beige paper, it's too much. Um, so that was the one I already have. This one, the new in the set. So I have two of beige, beige, and I got the super duper huge one in ivory. It's few shades lighter. And it gives you perfect, perfect cream background uh, with a huge tip. Uh, it's beautiful. I love it so much. So this is my um, nude collection. I have a gray. I had a gray. It's useful when I need to shade something darker because I don't have a black. I can do black with anything actually, so I don't have a black. Uh, so this is gray and I will pair it with white just because I have nothing to pair it with and I have nothing to pair white with too. So I will just pair it with it. Uh, I have pinks. I have a uh, light pink, very sweet, very cute. I have light orange which is a little bit like skin color. It looks very vivid here, but it's a little bit like skin color. You could do it as a skin color. And I picked up a coral pink as a complementary shade. And these two, these two look wonderful together. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, so this is my warm pink section. Uh, I have two violets. I have a lilac violet and I have violet violet. This one is lighter. Um, the packages are pretty the same. No, it, it, there is a difference, I think. Um, but they look great too. So I have two of these. I have two blues. This one is very vivid. This one is uh, sky blue and this is very toned down, beautiful sky color. So I have shading for my blue. And the only one I have left is green. I didn't find any complementary green I could pair it with. Uh, I wanted to do an emerald green, but in the end I didn't decide. Uh, so I have only one green. It's very beautiful though. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, this is my this is my huge story about uh, about Posca markers. Uh, I love them. I use them every day and it's such a joy. It's such a joy, guys. Um, all right, so these were my all art supplies and stationery essentials of 2021 of August, <laughs> August 17, actually. So I hope you enjoy it. I know it's been a long video, but there will be no vlog this week. So I hope you enjoy it uh, anyway and see you in another one. Bye.